так. А тут есть проблема, которая возникнет к середине доклада. Здесь очень мало мела. Кусок, кусочки все маленькие и потихоньку исчезающие. Нет, цветной есть. Нет. А, о, а, а, нет, это пустая, пустая коробка. Надо ли говорить по-английски? А, well, well, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, so, last time I was asked to uh, to, to talk about uh, local combinatorial computation of pan-tracking classes, and uh, th these are more or less old my results about uh, 2004 to 2008. Uh, but also, uh, I, I, I will mm, speak on uh, first. I will speak on uh, on the on the problem itself and on uh, these results and then I will come to more recent results uh, namely of my joint results with Denis Gradkov uh, of 2019 uh, which uh, this was a crucial simplification of the formula for the first pentagon class and also uh, I will uh, finally uh, I uh, at the end of the talk, uh, I will try, if I have enough time, uh, I will try uh, to speak about manifolds uh, which are like uh, projective planes, and this is the relationship between this talk and the previous one. Uh, but the first part will become completely independent of the previous talk. So, first of all, what are pan-tracking classes? If you have a real vector bundle, uh, over any base, it may be a manifold or just any space, uh, then uh, such re real uh, bundles are classified by maps of this M to certain classifying space. This is standard uh, result, and this is a semi-infinite Grassmannian, Grassmannian of n-dimensional planes in R infinity. So there, there is such uh, uh, rather simple theorem that uh, bundles are classified by such mappings. This means that bundles up to isomorphism are in one-to-one -one correspondence with such maps up to homotopy. Uh, okay, once we have uh, such classification, uh, uh, classification theorem of such kind, uh, we up immediately obtain the notion of characteristic classes. Namely, characteristic classes are just cohomology classes of this space. Uh, uh, gi given any cohomology class, we can, uh, and given a bundle, we can uh, take a pullback along the, uh, the map classifying this bundle, and we get a cohomology class of this, of the base. So, 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 so once we are given a cohomology class here, we obtain a, fun, uh, a transformation which uh, for each uh, bundle it yields a cohomology class of the base. Uh, and uh, th this is natural with respect to uh, uh, morphisms of bundles. Uh, okay, and actually pantragon classes are stable 
characteristic classes. This means that uh, I consider bundles up to a dish, uh, up to add an any trivial bundle. Uh, so uh, and then such objects are classified uh, classified by uh, maps not to BON but to BO, which is just a direct limit of BON. Uh, so we are interested in stable characteristic classes are just cohomology classes of this space uh, of this uh, 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 space. Uh, and uh, uh, and this cohomology, of course, are known. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, it has been computed f f far ago, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, the result is as follows. Okay, we can consider cohomology with various coefficients, but uh, for me only integral and rational coefficients will be interesting. Uh, just uh, the result is that if we consider the cohomology of the cohomology ring of this space with integral coefficients, uh, then uh, this is the polynomial ring with degrees, uh, with generators in each degree divisible by 4, plus some two torsion which I don't want to discuss. So we also have some two torsion which corresponds to stiefel whitney classes, but I, I don't want to discuss it uh, now. Uh, for me, only this part is interesting. Well. Uh, not an a actually uh, the, uh, it is not completely Stiefel Whitney classes. Stiefel Whitney classes is the whole uh, uh, t t tensor by uh, z, z over two. So this this is some part. But but okay, I don't want to speak about two torsion at all. If we consider uh, coefficients in a rational number, then of course all this torsion goes away and we get just uh, polynomial ring. However. Pantragin classes are not uh, uh, are not some uh, generators of this ring, but uh, they are some particular uh, generators of this ring. Uh, and uh, uh, okay, there are several definitions. I don't want uh, actually. If I go to definitions of Pantragin classes, I will not be able to uh, say anything. Uh, <laughs> Just, uh, just only. Uh, well, okay. Uh, just uh, a more common object is churn classes, which are obtained in the same way if we uh, replace B O by B U. If we consider s uh, uh, complex vector bundles, then everything is uh, in the same way. We everywhere replace R with C. B O with B U, and here we get uh, no to torsion and uh, the polynomial ring with generators in each even dimension. And uh, uh, the, the most standard definition is that I, uh, well, let it be K, Pantragin class, is uh, up to a sign, it's 2 K, uh, Chern class of the complexification of the bundle. Uh, this is just a relationship between uh, Pentagon and Chern classes. Okay, and also, uh, well, uh, if we are speaking about uh, an important thing is that if we are speaking uh, not about integral but about real Pentagon classes, uh, that we take their uh, their uh, uh, images uh, uh, in cohomology with real coefficients, then uh, these classes can be written in the RAM cohomology, uh, uh, starting from uh, uh, any uh, connection in this bundle. We introduce connection in this bundle. We write curvature matrix, and uh, we uh, uh, then Pantragin class is such multiple uh, times this, where this is the uh, 
the elementary uh, um, well the elementary invariant uh, polynomial uh, the uh, well this is a skew symmetric matrix of two forms skew symmetric matrix of two forms and uh, we have uh, various uh, for for a matrix uh, for a skew symmetric matrix we have its uh, inver uh, uh, elementary invariant polynomials which are defined by we can consider characteristic uh, polynomial of this matrix and uh, uh, the result is uh, mm, uh, the result is uh, uh, okay the, the, uh, let this be 2k by 2k uh, oh, no, 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 no. 2n by 2n matrix okay okay matrix uh, this is skew symmetric matrix and we have uh, oh, I'm ah well I'm sorry to, to get good signs, it's better to do like that. A, a is just a skew symmetric matrix. Yes, yes. Just, just this is a definition for any matter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe, maybe we can write like that. Uh, uh, okay. So it's lambda to the power. Uh, mm, uh, okay, to n. Uh, well, uh, actually, it does not. It is well. Elementary, elementary symmetric functions in uh, yes, yes. The, the, maybe, maybe it's it's even better. Okay, uh, sigma k of a uh, is elementary symmetric uh, function uh, in its eigenvalues. Okay, and since it is uh, uh, skew symmetric, we have only uh, even elementary symmetric functions. Okay. okay. Uh, 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 coefficients of the characteristic polynomial. Just, just I, I, I forget to write down the signs, and the, 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 it's the, the thing I always forget. So, uh, so, 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 so uh, oh, <laughs> my problems were just about signs. So uh, the, these are really coefficients of uh, characteristic polynomials. Uh, uh, okay. I'm, I, I, I'm sorry for for. for um, Oh, I, I, I think th th this definition is completely clear that we, ju we just take uh, elementary symmetric polynomials in uh, eigenvalues. Uh, okay, mm. just I don't want to go in further details just to save some time. Uh, okay, uh, and also uh, one thing which I would like to mention is that uh, it, it will be very important for me that uh, Pantragen, uh, once we have Pantragen classes, we can consider Pantragen numbers of manifolds. Namely, if we have a manifold of dimension 4k, and so, uh, for, for, uh, yeah. Ah, well, okay, okay. It's polynomial of degree 4k to 2k. And this is matrix of two forms. So, so, so when we, uh, we, 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 we obtain this 4k form and it is closed, it's, it's just theorem that it is always closed. And, and, well, and the important thing is that with this multiple, this form has uh, integer uh, integrals over all cycles integer period uh, and and this is exactly uh, entering classes but here we lose some information these are only real cohomology classes we do not have int integer cohomology classes cannot be defined in this way uh, Yes, yes, if we consider cohomology modulo torsion, but uh, this is not modulo this torsion. The, these integral uh, classes can, can, be a, can be a torsion elements in M. Oh, because we, uh, contracting classes can be torsion elements. 
uh, they can be elements of finite order, or, or, or they can be. Uh, of course, of course, no, no torsion. This is just about uh, the images of these cohomology classes in if you, in cohomology with the real case. Yes, of course, of course, this, uh, if I, uh, I understood you correctly, yes, of course, this uh, definition or uniquely uh, uh, fixes these uh, generators in the universal case. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and then, uh, yes, th that's true. Uh, OK, uh, an important thing for me is that if you have an oriented manifold of dimension 4K, then for any, sub, let it be for n, for any partition of the number n, you can consider the, uh, the class, uh, the product of the corresponding Pantragon classes. And it has uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the dimension for n. The, the, this cohomology class, so we can integrate it over the whole manifold, and we get the number. So, so, so this is called these are called Pantragon numbers. So there are as many of them as uh, uh, the number of partitions of the number n, uh, and uh, uh, an important thing is that these Pantragon numbers uniquely determined an L an element of the co cobodis marine up to torsion. What is cobodis marine? You can consider uh, oriented, it, these are just oriented cobodisms, so you can consider n dimensional uh, oriented manifolds up to uh, oriented cobodism. Uh, so so, so then, you, then you get uh, ring. Uh, so just means that we consider oriented. Things smooth manifolds without boundary oriented, uh, they are said to be cobordant if uh, they ba together bound a, a, a manifold with boundary uh, of dimension n plus one, which is again oriented. Everything. Uh, no, 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 let it be m. And, uh, now I want to, to give definition for any uh, for any dimension. Uh, but non-trivial, uh, these groups will be non-trivial only in dimensions for M, except for two torsion again. So if you consider this, uh, uh, this, this ring, it is a ring with respect to direct product. Uh, multiplication is direct product, sum is just disjoint sum. And uh, the uh, answer is that this is a polynomial ring of certain generators of degree for i, again plus two torsion, which I don't want to discuss. Here it is more uh, complicated, uh, but uh, for, for, for sure I don't want to discuss it now. And, uh, and they are uniquely de detected by these Pantragon numbers. So uh, a manifold is null cobordant if and only if. No, no, no. The, the, a manifold, uh, if I would like to say way when a manifold is null cobordant, this will be more complicated. But uh, I would like, uh, given a manifold M, I would like to say that two copies of it with the same, two, 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 two M, uh, is null cobordant. Uh, 
if and only if uh, all Pantragen numbers uh, are zero. Uh, well, so so this is uh, the only in the only invariance except for two torsion. If we forget about two torsion, this, these are the only invariants of Kabodis. Okay. <laughs> in a sense, this is the main result, and hence you have this. Uh, well, the, the, uh, all, all. Yes. 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 Sure. Uh, the, the, well. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, th this is a computation which is based on pan on a notion of Pantragen number, uh, uh, numbers and class. Uh, it's it's a very funny problem. Uh, well, uh, uh, I I will spend five minutes to this. Uh, well, uh, actually, uh, a simpler a simpler. Uh, uh, question is about uh, is about uni uh, unitary Kabodism. Uh, but uh, okay, for for smooth for oriented, it is somewhat uh, more complicated, but not very much. For unitary, it is very a very interesting situation. Uh, you know that if you take uh, if you take such uh, binomial coefficients n over k, where n is fixed and k varies. Then there is uh, the following result, a great common divisor of all such binomial coefficients for given n, but k goes from 1 to n minus 1. This, this thing is uh, one, if n is not a power of a prime, and it is p if n is a power of this prime. Uh, this is a result. Well, wh why this is important? Uh, there is one special Pantragen number. I don't want to say which one. Uh, those which corresponds to uh, to uh, uh, up to symmetric polynomial uh, power of uh, uh, sum of uh, nth powers, this uh, Newton symmetric. Uh, okay, uh, one special, uh, one special uh, Pantragen number for which it is known that if you find in the corresponding dimension a manifold which satisfies that this particular Pantragen number is this number, then this manifold is a generator. You can find this manifold for a generator. And one can explicitly construct, very explicitly construct manifolds whose this, this particular Pantragen number is like that. Now you know uh, for each k you can, con no, for, like that. Uh, and you can constru construct a manifold mk which has this Pantragen numbers, it is denoted like that. Oh, then, okay, of course, great common divisor is a certain linear combination of these numbers. And you should take the corresponding linear combinations of manifold. And this is a precise, uh, mm, uh, an explicit uh, uh, generator. But there is a funny mo uh, uh, situation. Uh, you know, people know that th th this is true, but there is uh, no explicit, uh, I no idea how to find explicitly, in general case, s such numbers th th that this is 1 or p. So, 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 of course, there are such numbers. But if you ask wh whether you can find it them explicitly, nobody, nobody knows about it. Yes, integer numbers. 
MK is a certain uh, Herze Herzebruch surface, I don't know, I don't remember which particular Herzebruch surface, but, but uh, it's the it's, uh, usual Herzebruch surface, you take uh, CPN times CPM, uh, and uh, you, you take uh, the standard bilinear uh, 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 e equation, so e e e e uh, it is very explicit. It, 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 they are manifolds like that. So these manifolds are very explicit. Uh, complex two dimension one. Okay. So so. so. This is not just this man. There are manifolds like that. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't remember explicitly uh, the answer. So something like that, and uh, uh, so they are very explicit. And uh, then you need to take certain linear combinations of them. But <laughs> yes, yes, of, of certain uh, h, you, you need to. No, 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 they, they need to be, no, they, they, no, 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 they, 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 they. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, in this particular case, yes, but uh, the, the, yeah, I say this, this is something like, oh, okay, 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 okay. Well, next important, well, now everything here concerns only smooth situation. You have completely uh, no such approach in, uh, for non-smooth manifolds. You mean uh, the left-hand side or the uh, side? Both the RAM side and uh, th this idea about Grassmannian, so uh, uh, you can introduce certain classifying spaces. Classifying spaces work, but uh, there is no, si no such good uh, model. Yes, you need, you need, in some sense, you need tangent bundles. There is uh, a lot of, the uh, the 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 there were a lot of theories towards first uh, people try to work with just PL vector bundles. Uh, not PL, uh, it is not good to say PL, uh, vector bundles in this situation. One can work with bundles whose, uh, whose uh, fiber is Rn, but uh, whose uh, group, uh, so how it, structure group, is not or S or N or something like that, but the whole group of all PL uh, homeomorphisms of Rn. These are bundles with completely different properties. They are very far from being vector bundles. Next, uh, this is not enough. In this sense, not any. Uh, uh, you need, you actually, you want not only to have a t tangent bundles. To, to, to obtain good theory, uh, what you need, you need to have normal bundles, bundles for submanifolds. To, 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 to obtain theory which behaves more or less like smooth in smooth case, you need to have normal bundles for submanifolds. Uh, th though in, in many, uh, in, in a lot, there are a lot of constructions when you need normal, normal, to, to consider nor normal bundle. Yes, yes, so suppose you have, now, now we want to work with in PL category, so suppose you have a PL manifold and a PL submanifold of it, and uh, 
to, to develop good theory of characterization classes, one needs such theory of bundles that uh, submanifolds have normal bundles. Uh, this is not good in this sense. Then Milner introduced so-called microbundles. A uh, microbundle is something I, I'm not going to give precise definitions since they are long. Uh, but okay, you can always consider for vector bundle, you can always embed base to the total space as a zero section. So here uh, the idea is also that uh, microbundle base is already embedded in the total space, but you have not a projection as a map of the whole total space uh, to the base, but you have only job of uh, uh, job. Uh, Rostock. Germ? I'm, I'm sorry for the only a germ of the projection. So projection is defined only in, in an arbitrary small neighborhood of the base. You can develop such theory. It, is, it doesn't coincide with this one. It is different. And it is an, again not. A, well? The germ of infinite order. Uh, Literally a germ. Uh, uh, you have no order. You have no smooth structure here. You, you can only say that uh, the map is defined in some uh, neighborhood. Uh, you get good theory of microbundles, but it is not enough. Not all, not, not all submanifolds have, uh, have nor uh, normal bundles in this case. And a good enough theory uh, is so-called theory of block bundles. Uh, where you have no projection at all. The idea is that uh, it's not a bundle. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, the idea is that the base is decomposed into cells. Over each cell, there is a block, which is uh, this uh, this cell which is homeomorphic to, it, to the cell multiplied by fiber. Uh, so, of course, on this block, you have projection. So, uh, you, then you have, uh, you have cells of smaller dimension, which are in the boundary of sigma. And again, over each of these cells, you again have their its own block, and so on, but the projections uh, are not required to be compatible with each other. So this is some very strange notion, but it appears that it is enough. <laughs> it, it, it actually works, but unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, this is just um, to say, okay, you have some classifying space in this situation, but unfortunately you can say almost nothing about it. You have no such good model of it. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, 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 actually, this all this theory, all this theory appeared later. It it was uh, developed in 70s, uh, in 80s, uh, maybe something. But uh, Pantragian classes of PL manifolds were uh, uh, were introduced in 50s uh, by uh, Rochlin, Schwartz, and Thom, and. It is much easier. You, don't, you do not need this approach to, to develop. So you do not need uh, bundles to, de to, to, to uh, introduce uh, uh, PL penetrating classes, combinatorial penetrating classes. And now I want to say how they are defined. Uh, so the main, the main thing here is, OK, the, f the first interesting example is four-dimensional manifolds. When you have four-dimensional manifold, then the, uh, the cabotism group is just Z. And one can compute that uh, the generator of this group is the cabotism class of CP2. So in this situ situation, everything is very explicit. And one can compute this is a smooth manifold, so everything works. One can compute the first Pentragon number of CP2 
the integral of the first Mentorian class. This is just some particular integral you can compu compute, and it is 3. And uh, also for four-dimensional manifolds, for oriented four-dimensional manifolds, there is such important uh, uh, invariant called signature. You can consider two-dimensional homology, and there is intersection form in two-dimensional homology, and this is a symmetric uh, bilinear form, so you have signature of it, number of positive squares minus number of negative squares. Uh, so this, this is called signature of four-dimensional manifold. And it can be proved that signature is also an invariant under cobordism. So you have two invariants of the, in the group Z, so they are proportional to each other. And uh, since the signature of CP2 is, of course, 1, you get uh, this famous Rochlin's formula. Oh, sorry. Uh, three signature is equal to the first Pantragen number for each four-dimensional manifold. This is due to Rochlin. And uh, there is uh, the following generalization of this theorem by Herzebruch. Uh, now consider for k dimensional manifold. Now consider a 4k dimensional manifold. Uh, then it has a lot of Pantragen class, uh, classes, but it turns out that one can point out a particular polynomial in its Pantragen classes uh, such that this is a polynomial uh, of homogeneous uh, which gives a uh, homology class of degree 4k. So it is homogeneous if we uh, consider these classes of, uh, as elements of corresponding uh, degrees. Uh, so, uh, so we can integrate it over 4k dimensional manifold. And it turns out that one can point out such polynomials that this is equal to signature for any 4k dimensional manifold. The idea is, uh, of the proof is the same. The the polynomial with the rational coefficients, yes. Uh, well, L1 is, is like that. This is just Rockland's case. Uh, well, just I, I, I will write down the first four. Uh, Yes, 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 it's very similar to Todd class, uh, uh, just uh, they correspond to different... Uh, uh, okay, I would like to write uh, down also the fourth, since if I have time, it will have something with uh, actinionic projective plane. I, pr I prefer to, ha to have it written now. Uh, uh, so, some things like that. Something like that. Uh, the, general, the general rule is as follows, that uh, one should consider uh, variables ti and one should consider such formal series. Square of Ti then, uh, by over the hyperbolic tangents of, of, uh, uh, of uh, the square of Ti. And you can multiply this and then written as, uh, uh, written as uh, polynomials in uh, symmetric, elementary symmetric polynomials in Ti. So this is symmetric in Ti. So you can write it as 1 plus. Uh, these, are, these are just 
homogeneous paths of elementary symmetric polynomials. Uh, it can actually, uh, it is uh, better to say that index theorem comes from here. Uh, it was, of course, first of all, it was before index theorem. It is 1950s. It's something like uh, 1954. Uh, about uh, I, I mean. uh, and second, actually, uh, this theorem, uh, in at least in some proofs of the Atiyah-Zinger index theory, this one, uh, this theorem is used to normalize index theory. So, uh, theorem uh, the, uh, from the proof, we get that the index must given give, be, must be given by certain polynomials in Chern classes. So, so, so certain polynomials in Chern classes of index. But the way that uh, th it is exactly those polynomials which are in the index theorem, they can be uh, obtained in, in such uh, things. Uh, okay. Uh, No, the only ration, the only ration, yes, yes. But it's sufficient, yes, 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 yes. yes. The it's sufficient to check for, for projective space? Yes, yes. The, the proof is exactly like that. Uh, first, you, but you need this fact. You need this fact that uh, any invariant of cobordism co must be some linear combination of Pantragin numbers. Then you check that this particular. Uh, Yes, yes, yes. The, 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 here, uh, the, the, you check that this is true for uh, for uh, for products of CP two for of uh, 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 of, of CP of even. Yes. This is much easier than the proof of index theorem, of course. Yes, the, of course, there are different proofs of index theorem, and you can get this from index theorem. But but this is not an, <laughs> an easy way to get this. Uh, th this is much easier than the, uh, the index theorem. Uh, okay, uh, so so what? Uh, uh, this is the basic moment for definition of combinatorial Pantragin classes. The idea is like that. Uh, okay, first consider a smooth situation. First consider a smooth situation. Uh, well, first just algebraic fact. Uh, look, suppose you know these classes. Then rationally you can express on the Pantragin classes from, from them. This, this is just, uh, okay, okay, okay. A any Pantragin class is expressed from uh, as polynomial in previous Pantragin classes and the corresponding L class. So it is, uh, it is possible to inverse this transformation and express classes PI from LI, but, but only rational, of course, no, no, not over integers. So it is enough to understand these L polynomials in Pantragin classes. But, but not only uh, L, L polynomial of the higher dimension, okay, it's just signature, but you need 
to know all L polynomials in Pentragon classes. Then, then you can restore the Pentragon classes itself, uh, originally. And the idea is like that, that, okay, there is, uh, suppose you have a manifold of dimension M, and you have an, a homology class of it of dimension N. Uh, a standard question which goes back to Steenard uh, is whether it is possible to realize this class as by a submanifold, by a smooth submanifold in M. The answer is not always uh, and so on. Moreover, I am interested not in any realization. I am interested in realization uh, with trivial normal, I would like to realize this class as a submanifold with trivial normal bundle. This is a, not always. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. No. It's not yeah, it is. It's yes. But the result due to Renia Tom, uh, also about uh, 50, middle 50, is like that that you can always realize this class, but not in, the, in this manifold but in this manifold multiplied by certain RQ. And then you can realize uh, this homology class by manifold here with trivial normal bundle. Smooth, everything is smooth, yes. And, but this will be not this class, but uh, some it's multiple. So, uh, yes, no, not only up to torsion, up to uh, uh, some, it's a multiple where, uh, where A is a uh, positive integer. Uh, okay, there is theorem of such kind. Uh, wha uh, what does this theorem says to us? Suppose uh, that you have realized X in such way. Then, uh, I would like to consider, I, I denote by LK of M uh, the polynomial, this polynomial in Pantragon classes of M. So if we take this uh, uh, polynomial, and I would like, uh, now I, I'm, I want to take the 4K. The dimension will be 4K, so this will, will be a 4K dimensional oriented manifold. Then. If I integrate this polynomial over this n, uh, okay, of, co of, co of course I mean that I take the pullback. Then look, uh, since the bundle is trivial, the normal bundle is trivial, the pullback of this will be the corresponding, the same class of n. So, the, by Herzebruch theorem, this is a signature of N. But look, this side can be, cons can be computed without any smooth structure. Signature is an invariant which doesn't require smooth structure at all. Uh, this is just homotopy invariant. Uh, so, uh, we, uh, but this is uh, R over the integral of the class LK of M along the homology class X. So you can restore this value from this data. So you can, uh, you can do it for all possible homology classes and then you can restore this homology class. And then if you make this for all K, then you can restore all Pantragon classes just by solving equations. But it turns out that all this construction, all is, so all what is. Not, not, not. Not I, but. Uh, 
not I, but Rochlin uh, Schwartz <laughs> and Tom independently uh, proved in such way that rational Pantrain classes are PL invariants, invariants under PL homeomorphism. The fact that they are invariant under all homeomorphism is much harder and was proved by Sergei Novikov. And uh, th this is much harder. This is, I don't want to discuss this. But in this situation, uh, in this situation, mm, uh, all what is written here works as well in uh, PL category. Uh, you need you need only trivial. You need you do not need normal bundle. You need trivial normal bundle. Trivial normal a manifold with trivial normal bundle is a manifold which can be embedded together with its multi multi multiplication by a disk. So it is very easy to say what does it mean that a manifold has trivial normal bundle. And it, it turns out that all these results can be transmitted to PL case without any. Uh, ch change. So in PL case, you can take this for, uh, for definition. So to, com to, f to compute the case Herzebruch class of the manifold M, you need to consider such manifolds, such submanifolds, realizing all possible homology classes. And then the value of this homology class on a homology class is like that, is given by uh, you, you need to, con to, con to compute signatures of the corresponding manifolds and uh, then you uh, get uh, this cohomology class and then you compute the tracking classes. So, no, the, this, this coefficient, uh, it uh, actually depends only on the uh, dimensions and e there are estimates which for include, uh, this is just some particular coefficient which, uh, 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 which comes from order, orders of certain, abst uh, certain uh, torsion abstractions, obstacles, so certain torsion. Uh, so No, no, no. It's images, of course, of the of the same dimension. Yeah. It's just a bit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anything. Yeah. The the matter is that. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's only in homology. So, so it's just uh, some singular cycle which, which represents the, the homology class. Uh, uh, okay, so this can be taken for definition, but this definition doesn't allow us to compute anything. The, the matter is that uh, this theorem on the existence of such a manifold is, is not constructible. Uh, is, is not effective. Uh, you just have some uh, obstacles which are uh, to turn out to be elements of finite order, hence multiplying by certain uh, number you can uh, get rid of them and uh, you can such find such manifold but uh, there is no way to construct it explicitly. Well, uh, so, so this more or less uh, gives a definition but it turns out that there is a question how to compute these rational contracting classes uh, explicitly. Actually, I just want to mention that uh, my result of 2008, in a sense, oh, 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 there is, uh, the result is as follows. There is an algorithm which computes any, you, you give for me 100 Pantragon class, and yeah, I give you an, an algorithm which computes uh, e, its, uh, uh, the, 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 this Pantragon class of any manifold. Uh, so there is such an algorithm. This is the result, and this is more or less uh, explicit form of this construction. Uh, 
Uh, but unfortunately, this algorithm works n never. It, it never works since the, uh, compl the complexity of this algorithm is factorial, 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 and, uh, and uh, not unreasonable. A, a good, uh, at the moment, there are some general results like that, but a good formula is only for the first contracting class, and this is what I want to discuss now. Uh, so, uh, uh, well, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I, I will mention it very soon. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, First of all, uh, I will start not historically, I will start with my approach, but uh, then I, I will discuss how it is related to the previous ones. Uh, well, uh, first of all, it is uh, a natural idea to, uh, to try to find uh, the answer in the following form. Uh, suppose you have, now I suppose we have a combinatorial manifold. Uh, this means that a manifold with triangulation, which is, which is combinatorial in the sense that uh, last, last, uh, uh, last time I uh, said uh, an explicit definition, so around each uh, vertex you have its star. And for me, an important object is link of the vertex. It's uh, th this sphere such that st star of vertex, so star is just union of all simplices that contain this vertex. Star is the vertex itself join link. Uh, similarly, for an arbitrary simplex, for an arbitrary simplex, uh, for an arbitrary simplex, uh, you have its link, it's such a sphere around it in triangulation, uh, so in this situation this one is link. So for an arbitrary simplex you have star which is sigma join its the link. So if, if the manifold has dimension n and simplex has dimension k, then this link is a sphere of dimension n minus k minus 1. And uh, the, I, I, I would like to work only in good case of combinatorial triangulations. This means that all these links are indeed PL homeomorphic to, to, uh, to spheres of the corresponding dimensions. Uh, last time I said that there are nasty examples uh, uh, which are not PL manifolds. Uh, there are examples of triangulations uh, which are not combinatorial, where these are not spheres but only homology spheres. I don't want to, to, to work with this. I, I w would like to work with uh, true combinatorial manifold. Okay, and now if you have a combinatorial manifold, a natural way to find an answer, it is, uh, okay, we, we would like to compute the kth pantragging class of a manifold. So it's a cohomology class of dimension 4k. So by Poincaré duality, you have uh, a dual, the dual homology class of dimension n minus 4k. So an idea is that you should take all simplices of the corresponding dimension, and you should take any simplex with some coefficients, coefficient depe depending only on Uh, dependent only on the structure of the link. So we would like to, this, this formula just means that we would like to compute uh, the, uh, the, the resultant cycle locally. We would like to compute uh, it in such way that uh, uh, the coefficient depends only on the neighborhood of this link, or of this simplex, only on the link of it. Uh, Okay, uh, 
my approach was to use this as a crucial as a starting point to 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 study all functions f which give good answers uh, this is not the first of course of course uh, uh, the this was very natural because in the previous papers f formula of such uh, form already appeared in particular in gilfan gabriela flosik form uh, in uh, there, there was a work by uh, gabriela uh, gilfan flosik uh, this rather famous work of uh, 1975, they tried to compute the first Pantragon class, and after they, the, their approach was as follows. Uh, okay, if you would like to, com uh, to compute the first Pantragon class, then this sigma has codimension 4, so this one is a, a triangulation of three-dimensional sphere. Now you can try to study, uh, well, if you have a two-dimensional, a triangulation of a two-dimensional sphere, then you have uh, such Steinitz theorem, which says that any triangulation of two-dimensional uh, sphere can be realized as the, uh, the boundary of a convex polytop. Nothing of, of the same kind is true in three-dimensional case. So in two-dimensional, OK, if you have a two-dimensional sphere, any triangulation, then you can realize it as a boundary of a convex polytop in R3. But this is not true in, uh, in any higher dimension, and it is completely not true. Most triangulations have no such realizations. However, they, Gilfand, Gabrielov, and Losik, they uh, studied the space of realizations of a uh, or l l let it be a three, uh, just L is this triangulation of S3. But they realized they consider a weaker form of realization. They consider, uh, they wanted not to realize L as uh, the boundary of convex polytop, but to realize cone of L as a fan in, uh, in four space. So, uh, so for instance, uh, f f well, okay, okay. So th th they allow not convex by stellar realizations uh, like that. Uh, the uh, the realization must be stellar with respect to uh, to zero, the uh, the apex of cone, and you can consider the space of all such realizations. Uh, so you put to R4, R so that the apex of a cone goes to the origin, and a realization, and this map is linear on all simplices. So you get something like that, but in dimension four. And you take all such m maps, and uh, take the quotients over uh, uh, No, it's not true. They do not, um, it may be empty. And, uh, uh, and uh, so, first of all, uh, so the, the, the whole formula was based on, on the study of such objects, of such, classify, uh, of such configuration spaces of L. So first of all, to apply this formula, you need these spaces to exist. You, you, you need that uh, there, there are such realizations. Uh, you need the, them to be non-empty. Also, you need some mm, restrictions on, on the topology. So the formula is not always applicable at all. And moreover, it is not purely combinatorial. Uh, the matter is that to, to study, to f compute the coefficient, you need to, uh, you need to study this space. Uh, we, which is uh, not so combinatorial. Uh, you, you have no just direct combinatorial way to, to deal with the space. Uh, you, you, you need to study the geometry and topology of this space, which is a priori unknown. So 
uh, this is uh, why, well, th this is a very deep uh, work which uh, yielded to a, a very interesting formula. It has many applications, but uh, unfortunately, it, it is not a comp a complete combinatorial solution. So you, uh, we, we do not obtain an algorithm which uh, can be applied to, uh, to a given triangulation of manifold and which allows us to compute the first penetrating class. But this was one of the, in the cases when this formula works, it gives the answer in this form. So it was one of the, uh, it was one of the, um, uh, uh, reasons why we are looking to, uh, for for the answer of this form, uh, because because Gabriel van der Losek found their f partial formula uh, in this form. Uh, the another uh, reason for that uh, was uh, that in fact, in 1978, uh, Levit and Rourke uh, proved. Well, they almost proved the existence of a formula of such kind. Uh, uh, this is a very short paper without any attempt to compute anything explicitly, but uh, they just proved uh, the existence result. There is a function f which provides a formula of such kind. Just, just, just uh, without, without any uh, ideas how to compute this fu function. But their result was weaker. They proved that there is the, this function where here we have star instead of link. From the first glance, it is the same. Star is just simplex uh, join link, so it seems that the same information. In, uh, however, uh, the uh, <coughs> however. In fact, here we have more information. Star is uh, uh, equivalent to the pair of link and dimension. So, so the result was that if you are given the number of penetrating class and the dimension of the manifold, then you have formula of such kind. But for, for different dimensions, you can have different formula. But actually, uh, the true result uh, this is not a far generalization. This is rather easy generalization, but uh, as far as I know, it was not uh, done before me. Uh, that <laughs> actually, any, uh, uh, if a formula works for one dimension, then the same formula works for any dimension. This is a rather easy observation, but it is important since e it is exactly this kind of formula which are convenient to work with. But now, now. Yes, yes, yes. For for for. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you very much. Uh, this is exactly wh wh what I mean. Uh, uh, but uh, now I would like to be slightly more precise, the matter is that this is an oriented sphere. Uh, this is an oriented triangulation of a sphere. Uh, the matter is that, OK, our manifold, it is oriented. Uh, simplex, we take it with some orientation. And then the link also becomes oriented. And to, if we will want this term to be well defined, then this value must uh, change its sign whenever we change the orientation. Because when we change the orientation of a simplex, we get minus here. So we, have, we, we need to get minus from here to, 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 to have a well-defined term. So we are interested uh, in functions on three di ex Indeed, you need to a functions of on oriented triangulations of three-dimensional spheres uh, such that this function is skew-symmetric in the sense that it changes sign whenever we change uh, the orientation. So, indeed, our input is we are given a triangulation of a three-dimensional sphere and an orientation of it. 
and then we need to produce a rational. Uh, and uh, this must satisfy this particular uh, uh, rule. Okay. And now, <coughs> uh, well, now the core of my approach was the following. That, uh, that well. Yes, of course. Uh, all actions with cohomology classes are, are straightforward. Uh, multipli multiplication of, of cohomology classes, it's, it's just, it, it, ma it is much easier than computation of P1. So, of, co of course, uh, to compute a square of a cohomology class, uh, and, uh, well, to co uh, of, course, of course, you need first to compute the dual the Poincaré dual cohomology class, and then computed square. But all these things are, are much easier than computation of this cycle. So, so we, of course, they can be done com combinatorially. Uh, OK. <coughs> now, uh, the main idea was to forget about Poincaré classes at all, and to study those functions f, which always yield cycles. So to speak about uh, homology class, we must, uh, this z to satisfy the boundary must be zero. So OK, if I take just any function f, t you t I, I take some function f, and of course, I can always produce such a uh, chain, but it doesn't turn to be a cycle. It doesn't satisfy this. But this is an equation on f. So I would like to study which functions f yield chains which are always cycles. And this was the main idea. And actually, uh, let, us, let us write down this, uh, the, this uh, equation. Uh, the matter is, OK, we would like this to be cycle. But this means that any, OK, this is a chain of dimension n minus 4k. So I must consider any simplex of dimension one smaller, n minus 4k minus 1. And this simplex must enter with coefficient 0 to 2 dz. OK, but, okay, uh, but the link of this simplex is a 4k dimensional sphere. In, in the situation of, a of the first maintaining class, it's just four dimensional sphere. And the sum of coefficients of this simplex in dz is just the following. If you have a 4k dimensional sphere L, uh, or oh, not L, is this uh, n, uh, then the function f must satisfy the following. The sum over all vertices of n, f of link of this vertex, in n must be 0. So this is exactly uh, the, uh, the equation dz equals 0 for all, for all manifolds simultaneous. So f in particular, for the first pentagon class, I am interested in all functions on three-dimensional triangulation of a sphere satisfying this. And this, where n is an arbitrary triangulation of a four-dimensional sphere. So I would like, for all triangulations of four-dimensional sphere, I have these equations. And uh, I'm interested in all, uh, in all functions that satisfy these equations. OK. And it turns out that uh, the same, I can do the, the same in an arbitrary dimension. So generally. The, this uh, algebraically, this can be organized as the following cochain complex. Let us consider, uh, I denoted by Tn of Q, it's the set of all all Q-valued functions 
он oriented uh, uh, triangulations, combinatorial, tri combinatorial triangulations of Sn minus 1. Okay. And these groups are uh, organized into co chain complex. Where these different oh co chain complex n plus one uh, 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 with differential uh, given by this the sum over all vertices of n f of link v and the formula for which which yield all which always yield cycles are exactly those functions which are co cycles in this complex and the result uh, this is my theorem uh, that cohomology of this complex is exactly the Uh, polynomials in Pentagon classes. And this isomorphism is as follows. This means that uh, yes, I can define a multiplication, but not so easy. It is not uh, not nice, but, but, but it is possible. Uh, mm, but uh, generally the result is that for each polynomial of Pentagon classes, you have a function f which produces a local formula of it for it, and this function is unique up to a co-bounder of this complex. And uh, and moreover, each function, if a function satisfies condition that this is always a cycle, then this function uh, yields a formula for some polynomial in Pentagon classes. So. But maybe for zero polynomials. So, 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 so to, uh, this general result says that in the case of the first Pentagon classes, I need to point, I need just to find a function which satisfies these equations. I, uh, if I find any solution of this system of equations, then it necessarily gives the first Pentagon class up to a multiple. Then I just need to compute one, one example to, to check that this m multiple is not zero. The solution should be unique. No, a solution is unique up to a co-boundary. What does it mean? Do, what does it mean? Uh, there are trivial uh, solutions. Uh, uh, well, look, you have a three-dimensional, an oriented three-dimensional sphere. Yes? You can consider its uh, links of vertices in this three-dimensional sphere. And you can take the sum over all vertices, any function g on link vertex. You, you, you take all, all, all possible links, they are two-dimensional sphere, take any function on oriented two-dimensional spheres, and you may uh, uh, consider such function. This is always a solution, uh, but this solution always gives zero homology class. So it is not interesting, but our, the, the answer, the, the required uh, combinatorial formula is unique up to, for, up to functions of such kind. This? Non-trivial, yeah, of course. And to do this, uh, when I present a function, uh, when I presented a function, I made a computation in the easiest case of nine uh, vertex triangulation of CP2, and I find out that uh, the result is non-zero. So, 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 so okay, 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 and and immediately I get the normalization coefficient. 
since a priori I know that I, I will present function in a moment but a priori I know only that this function uh, gives uh, us uh, a, a multiple of Pantragon class, maybe a zero mul multiple, but it turns out that not, not a multiple of uh, the Pantragon class itself. Uh, okay, uh, how ma many time I have? I'm so sorry. What time is it? I'm, I'm sorry for <laughs> okay okay uh, and now now uh, well the next idea to produce uh, an explicit formula is to use of uh, to use the so-called by, by stellar moves uh, I don't want to give precise definitions now. Uh, I need them only in dimension 3 and 2. And I, uh, uh, I will give definition only in these two di uh, cases. So in dimension 2, you have this move, which replaces one uh, triangle by three triangles. And you have this flip. In dimension three, you have also two types of move. Uh, you can consider a tetrahedron and decompose it into four tetrahedra. Uh, adding a point inside and four tetrahedra. And another uh, move is so-called three to two move. Uh, you consider two tetrahedra with the same uh, face and you, uh, you mm, replace them with uh, three tetrahedra uh, with this the same. Yes, the, the Yeah, yeah. So, so, so generally you have a join of simplex with boundary of a simplex and replace like that. Yeah. This is general uh, definition. Uh, what is important for me? Uh, and important for me is that uh, starting from to, to a bistellar move of two-dimensional sphere we can associate a three-dimensional triangulated sphere. Uh, the idea is as follows. Uh, okay, uh, I, I, I will, uh, I will uh, draw this situation for the, uh, for the first type, but the, uh, look, suppose that you take, uh, well, <laughs> this is a two-dimensional sphere, which, which uh, uh, which is in this layer. Then you, uh, what does mean this, uh, how can one look on uh, such uh, move? You can introduce here a very thin uh, tetrahedron. You can attach, consider a uh, flat uh, uh, triangulation of a sphere and attach uh, for from from above a tetrahedron here. So then if you look from this side you see this and if you look from that side you see this. And for, for the second situation you have uh, th these two and you obtain a, a thin tetrahedron uh, well okay uh, very, very thin, thin tetrahedron of this way that this is slightly be, be uh, mm, above uh, th this, and and uh, everywhere else you have uh, uh, just flat, and then you take attach a cone from here. Well, if this was L one, 
and this L2. Or I, I prefer to use L for three-dimensional spheres and let J for, for two-dimensional spheres. Then here I have to attain a cone over G2. This will be a vertex A2. And here I uh, attach a cone of G1. Uh, and uh, the result is a three-dimensional sphere. This is more or less two cones uh, above the same two-dimensional sphere, but with small change here, small local change. It turns out that... Uh, yes, yes. Uh, <coughs> it turns out that uh, sigma here Sigma is this uh, simplex, and tau is this vertex. Uh, uh, you have a uh, special agreement that the boundary of a point is empty, and joined with empty is the same simplex. OK, okay you, you need uh, so, so such agreements. Well, you can, you can spin, spin from without this, this yes, then it's just a suspension. Yeah. Well, you but you yes, if I take a suspension, then look, any such function f must be zero on a suspension, since a suspension has an automorphism which changes the, the orientation. But for this, it is not true. Moreover, it turns out that from these equations, one can deduce the following, that f of j2, uh, I denote this by L beta. L beta is this, this three-dimensional sphere. But look, OK, this, this is a three-dimensional sphere. But now, now consider, uh, uh, consider another bistellar move I denoted by alpha, a bistellar move of three-dimensional spheres. And suppose that a, a bistellar move of three-dimensional spheres transforms L1 to L2. Well, one three-dimensional sphere to another. But look, uh, for each vertex here, for each vertex V, in the link of V, I see a flip of uh, uh, a bistellar move of two-dimensional spheres. So if I, if I look from this, uh, then initially I have this situation. But uh, after that, I see th th this edge instead of this one. So in each vertex V, I have an induced by stellar move for each of these five or for each of these four vertices. I have a by stellar move which is induced uh, in, in the link of V. And then I can apply this construction for this alpha V. And it turns out that the, 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 these equations imply the following, that f of L2 minus f of L1 equals the sum over vertices which, which are close to this, uh, to this place. So uh, the, uh, the, the sum is over five vertices in this case and over four vertices in that case. And the sum is of f of, uh, of L alpha v. So I take this by stellar move of three-dimensional spheres. Alpha is a, a by stellar move of three-dimensional spheres, which transforms L1 to L2. For each of these vertices V, I consider the corresponding by stellar move of two-dimensional sphere and apply this construction and get a three-dimensional sphere, new three-dimensional sphere. So, well, uh, The right, the, the matter. Right depends on, on, the on the choice of this L, of this triangulation of sphere. Uh, wh which one? Uh, th th there is no choice in construction of this L beta. If you have a bistellar move of two dimensional sphere, this is constructed canonically. You take the first sphere, you add a simplex, and you take two cones. There, 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 is, there is no choices here. Starting from any 
uh, by stellar move of two dimensional sphere, you get a three dimensional sphere. Yes, by stellar move. Uh, it's not just uh, this yes, it's not just this picture. It's uh, a two-dimensional sphere with with this fragment, and uh, and you you apply this. Yes, of course. You have not only two by stellar move, but you have many of this. And uh, and the crucial thing is that this one is some function I denoted by h uh, of the by stellar moves. So it uh, it is function of bistellar move because it uh, just 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 it's it's tautological. Uh, I just denoted by h of alpha v, and uh, what I m did in uh, in two thousand four, I uh, found equations for this function, and uh, it turned out that. Uh, to, uh, if I want this f, well, first of all, why this is interesting? This is interesting because any, any triangulation of a sphere can be transformed by such moves to the boundary of a simplex. A a a all, all any uh, triangulation of a three sphere can be transformed by bistellar moves to any other in particular to the boundary of, uh, of the four-dimensional simplex. So if I know, if I manage to compute the right-hand side, then I can compute the value at, uh, at any uh, sphere. And initially, uh, my approach was to write down the functions on this H and uh, to study uh, uh, them and it turns out that uh, we can consider uh, such graph whose vertices are two-dimensional triangulations of two-dimensional spheres and edges are uh, edges are by stellar moves and this H is a one ka chain of this graph uh, just, just because it is function on edges and it turns out that this H is always closed ka chain, and the only thing which is which is important is the cohomology class. Uh, a, a particular representative is not important. Yeah, cycle just one dimensional cycle in a graph, just function on cycles, and th then uh, I uh, wrote down some elementary cycles, and I present uh, the values on these cycles. W this was my initial approach, and now I want to say how this can be simplified. This is simplification, with the, which is due to Denis Gradkov and myself, and the idea is that this this coefficient can be computed just ex explicitly, uh, the, 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 this value. So, uh, uh, so my data are as follows. I am given a, f a bistellar move of two-dimensional spheres. So I have an oriented two-dimensional, two di triangulation of two-dimensional sphere, and I have a particular bistellar move. Then I produce this uh, this uh, combinatorial sphere, and now I'll try to in, f in five minutes to say what is the what is the formula for this H of alpha v. It has two ingredients. Uh, yes, but but I know the whole two-dimensional sphere and uh, uh, take a move. Yes, well. Uh, the first idea is that assume that you have a triangulation of two-dimensional sphere. You know that the, the Euler characteristic of a two-dimensional sphere is two. But uh, you can 
always write down the Euler characteristic of this triangulation, which is of course two, as the sum over all vertices uh, over uh, of the following quantities. dv is just the degree of a vertex. Uh, it, it is an e easy exercise that uh, this yields the Euler characteristic. Degree is the number of uh, edges. And I denote this thing by w of v. Uh, and I prefer to write L here. Oh, sorry, I, I again forget that I want to denote uh, two-dimensional spheres by J. It's for two-dimensional spheres only. Yes, for any triangulation, I can introduce such weights of vertices. Uh, in fact, the picture which I has in mind, uh, maybe it is not quite correct, but it helped very much to find uh, the formula which I'm going to. That if I divide here by two, then the, fun, uh, the, uh, then the um, sum is one, I would like to think of this as of probabilities of vertices. Uh, of course, they are not positive, but uh, I, will, uh, I want to do only algebraic things, so, so, so it is not <laughs> a problem that they are not possible. Uh, okay, and now I would like to introduce the same probabilities, not true probabilities, on certain paths here. Now I consider three-dimensional sphere corresponding to, to a base stellar move, and I would like to introduce probabilities on paths from A1 to A2. So I would like to introduce certain special paths, uh, which and uh, assign some probabilities for them. And the idea is as follows. First of all, for each vertex here, uh, I would like to consider a two-edge path. I, I can go from A1 to W, and then from W to A2. OK, this, this, this is a wonderful path. And to, to this path, I uh, introduce its, its weight. It uh, uh, will be the following. Uh, OK, if the W doesn't belong to sigma and tau, if it is far away, then its uh, uh, combinatorial curvature in both spheres coincide. So uh, then I can consider that uh, uh, th this, pro this weight, I, I, I don't want to say probability, but I keep this in mind, weight of this path uh, is uh, uh, is just weight of W uh, in any of the two spheres uh, if uh, W is not in sigma and not in tau. Now, now the idea is that if sigma, if W is in sigma, then I should compute uh, this. The, the, if W is in sigma or in tau, then it is important in which of the two spheres I take the, 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 uh, the weight, because uh, you have different. Uh, uh, b b after a stellar move, uh, the, the, the degree may change by one. So the idea is that if W in sigma, so if uh, sigma is a simplex present in J1, this one is sigma, then you need to take the, this in J2. And if W is in tau, then you take this in J1. Uh, and also, uh, uh, I introduce, uh, we, we introduce uh, special three edge paths. You go from A1 to a vertex in sigma, W1 is in sigma. Then you go to a vertex in tau, W2 is in tau. And then you go to A, A2. And, uh, uh, don't, don't, don't ask me why, I have no time to explain, but for such paths, uh, the coefficient is, uh, this weight is minus uh, 1 over 12 uh, for, 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 for this type of move and 1 over 6 for this type of move. Uh, just, just some special. Oh. Right. Then it turns out that, uh, okay, you get certain certain uh, paths with certain coefficients. And so only two step passes and Only two step, oh yes, only two step passes and only, only th three step passes, all the very special ones. But then I w 
would like to construct the following object. Uh, uh, f uh, first of all, this object belongs to uh, the square product uh, of the first chain group of this sphere. Uh, ten tens of square product. And I, read, I just write down uh, the following. Mm, of course, one can think of this as of chain group of, uh, uh, of such L beta uh, uh, times L beta. Uh, OK. Uh, and th 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 this is written as follows. I take the sum over all pairs of paths I I in my set, in my special set of paths. Uh, let it be H. Uh, I put here the product of their weights. And I put here at the 1 cross at the 2. And minus 2, the sum over all paths. Now we wait. So this is an object. Mm. This is uh, an object in the square uh, tensor square of one-dimensional chains of this uh, L beta. And main claim is that, well, these weights are chosen so that, uh, OK, of course, here we, you have uh, the standard uh, uh, differential. And it is 0. So it is uh, uh, a cycle, not, not only a, such B cycle. Uh, to, 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 uh, in, in actually, this uh, C belongs to the standard squared of cycle, well, where Z, Z1 is the, uh, the kernel of the boundary map. So it is standard squared of cycles. Uh, well, and the second ingredient, which I don't want to step uh, now, I understand that I should uh, end up. Uh, well, suppose you have a three-dimensional sphere. Sorry, it's one tensor, it's two, it's two-dimensional, not one-dimensional. What does it mean? It's a one-tensor, it's two-dimensional. Well, it's it's tensor square of one-dimensional chains. Oh, uh, sorry, here it, it, it is like that. I, I'm sorry. Uh, of, of course, we, ha we have here so two. I, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yes, of, of course. But, but I prefer to think th 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 this one is more convenient to me. Now, suppose you have two one-dimensional cycles in three-dimensional, in oriented three-dimensional sphere. If uh, supports of these cycles are disjoint, then one can introduce the linked number of these two cycles. Uh, well, if cycles are rational, then the linked number, uh, the, of course, all, all cycles here are rational. If cycles are rational, then uh, of course uh, one uh, can introduce a uh, rational Linkin number. And now the idea is that I want to introduce generalized Linkin number of two th cycles. I would like canonical to assign canonically a rational number to a pair of rational cycles, uh, which are not required to have disjoint supports. Uh, the, the idea is that we, I would like to introduce a canonical way to shift a cycle to the dual representation. Uh, or to, sorry, to the, to the dual decomposition. I, I have a triangulation of three-dimensional sphere. Well, and uh, my cycle goes uh, along some one-dimensional simplices. Uh, and now I do the following. I, I consider uh, part, part of this cycle which 
for which this vertex is cl the closest one. Uh, this point is moved in the interior of any three-dimensional simplex with equal probabilities. I just uh, move it uh, and adhere also. And then I connect any two points here in some canonical way. So instead of going from here to here, I go in, in the complement of, of, of one. Um, I would like to push my cycle to the complement of one skeleton of the triangulation. And I claim that I can do it in such local canonical way. The only thing for me important is that this is defined locally and canonically. There are plenty of ways to, de to define it locally and canonically, but it turns out that any of them works. Uh, uh, and, and of course this link, uh, this generalized link, as it is de uh, since it is defined for all uh, cycles, it actually gi gives us a mapping from the tensor product of uh, one-dimensional cycles to Q. And then I can apply this to Xi. And this is the answer. So the, the, the uh, H of alpha V is uh, 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 this guy of Xi. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. The matter is, these are not cycles. I cannot replace it by link. Uh, these are chains. It's not, it's it, not yes, yes, yes. It is not true. It is not true that any summand uh, is a cycle. It is only this linear combination. So I uh, find, <laughs> but uh, but uh, fi but the claim is that it belongs to here. So we can apply this. And, and, and then, yes. Uh, well, so the, the result is uh, as follows, that the required, form, uh, the required function on three-dimensional uh, triangulations of sphere changes under by stellar move in the following way. We need to consider sum of phi over five or four vertices of such values. E each of them is computed in this way. So this is the result. Actually, the relationship with my previous formula, uh, w w which I had no time to explain, is that, uh, uh, well, previously I have equ e equalities for this h, equations for this h. And actually, uh, the result is the check that, that you have some freedom. yes. Uh, first of all, this gives a canonical choice, and second, uh, well, uh, but the, the proof is that this function is a solution of that system. So, 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 so I've, I'm sorry, uh, my promise about uh, manifolds like the projective plane, <laughs> I, I have completely no time for this. Uh, it is not easy, but it is uh, more or less a computation. It is a not, a not easy, uh, uh, well, it, it is just technical computation. Once, once this is written, it is a more or less technical computation. So uh, it is non-trivial to, 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 to an non-trivial part was to write this formula. Yeah, to, 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 to find, to, to have an idea that this comes from something like that. So uh, after it is written, uh, it is not an easy computation, but it is a computation. That, that it, is, it is despite the required formula. For this triangulation of projective plane, how many different triangulations it has? It has nine vertices, how many distinct triangulations? Only one. Up to analysis, there is only one triangulation. Uh, nine vertex. Just, just the boundary of the sequence. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I, 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 I don't understand the question. If you want to count this mathematical algorithm for CP2, you need to count it. Ah, well, yeah. If you count all the links, 
for, well, 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 for, for CP2, uh, the triangulation is vertex transitive. So its, it's uh, symmetry group acts transitively on its vertices. So all links are identical. They are isomorphic to each other. So we need to compute it only for one particular three-dimensional sphere. In this particular case, uh, this three-dimensional sphere has eight vertices. And you even do not need any computer or something like that. Uh, just by hands, this uh, 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 three-dimensional sphere uh, uh, can be taken by, by stellar moves uh, to, uh, to the boundary of a simplex. I don't remember how many of them, is, but something about uh, eight or nine by stellar moves. Yes, I, I, don't, I don't remember, but there are, there are a few of them. Very, very few of them, and oh, 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 one can compute this. In this case, just by hand. Uh, well, <laughs> frankly speaking, in this case, it is easier to compute it by my previous formula. <laughs> so the, 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 this thing is easier for computer, <laughs> but not for 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 a person. <laughs> Okay, I think that, that's all. Да, да, да. Соответственно, получается, 